presentation on TNN, the Nashville Network. Glenn, let's go. Uh, but, buddy, there's only 20 shopping days left till Christmas. And only 75 days till the Daytona 500. Yeah, but you're married. You know, I'm not. I've got a lot of people i got to shop for. With the Featherlight Southwest Tour out at the racetrack and the great action we've seen in the past two weeks, let's get out there and get with it, man. Oh, it's going to be fun. You know, we've seen these guys at Phoenix for the past couple of years. They put on a great show, great drivers. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, let's go then. We need to get to but work. We got, but no, we got one man, more stop. On, Just please, one more, buddy. We'll please, take me one second. Go. Just one more. <laughs> hey, buddy, you think Mike Joy would like one of these shirts? Glenn, please, let's get to the racetrack. I can't wait to see what Garrett Evans and Ron Hornaday Jr. do this week. After what a great race they put on last week, I cannot wait. How can you keep shopping? Well, that was a nifty pass that Hornaday moved to get around Evans, but you know, I wonder if Evans is going to try to pay him back this week. We'll never know. We're going to spend the rest of our life in here shopping, it looks like. Okay, buddy, okay. <laughs> to you and welcome to Tucson Raceway Park in Tucson, Arizona. We're back for another edition of Winter Heat. We've finally got some of that nice warm desert southwest weather that they've been promising since, since we've come out here. We've got it today. It's a little overcast, but it's going to be a great day for racing. Hello, everybody. I'm Glenn Jarrett filling in for Mike Joy this week, and my shopping partner and broadcast colleague, Buddy Baker, is with me here today. And, Buddy, you know, I think that the Southwest Tour cars we're going to see today may be the best suited to this racetrack that we've seen yet. Well, let me look and see if you have any. No, no, no stripes back there. He's the rookie in the booth today, folks, but I tell you what, these race cars are perfect for this uh, 3 8 mile racetrack here at Tucson. 2,900 pounds. They stop when they need to stop. They turn when they need to turn. They accelerate like a tiger. So <laughs> hookup is going to be a good show. Well, we saw some great practice times and an exciting pole run for a guy who'd never sat on the pole before. Let's go down and meet him. Ralph Shaheen is taking my place down there today. Ralph is with the pole center. That would be Kenny Shepard. And, of course, it is a surprise for Kenny Shepard. His best qualifying effort had been a fourth place until today. But the biggest surprise is he had called NASCAR just the other day and said, guys, I'm not coming to Tucson. I don't have a sponsor. Here you are. What happened? Well, we felt it was very important to show up down here. I'm in the middle of negotiations with some major sponsors right now, and I'm searching for more. Uh, I just felt to be cutting my throat by not showing up. My pit crew pulled together. Ron Gross Racing Engines, in addition to helping me with engines, helped out with some tires, fluidine, all my friends, so I'm a Valvoline. Everybody just pulled together. We're down here. We knew we could do well, but we're wanting to really focus on next year and concentrate on winning that championship. One would have to believe, Glenn, that that sponsor right now is wishing he'd stayed with Kenny Shepard. Well, I would think so, too, Ralph. Uh, he, he's done a great job here. It's a good thing that they got that thing together to come over here. But the race that I am really wanting to see is the one that Buddy mentioned earlier between Garrett Evans and Ron Hornaday. We saw a great race between them last week, and uh, I just got a feeling that Evans may have something for Hornaday. Well, Ron Hornaday, uh, he was a little aggressive last week, but he did what it took to win the race. I'm sure he didn't mean to do anything to anybody. Garrett Evans, he said he remembers how he got passed, so look out. <laughs> race drivers never forget when they get passed, and particularly how. Let's go back down on the grid. Ralph Shaheen is with Garrett Evans. I always believe, Glenn, that the best thing to do is to ask the driver himself. Okay, Garrett, you got Ron Hornaday coming after you. Replay of last week. Do you get him back? No, we're just out here to run against all these guys. It's going to be a very competitive race. And Ron, he didn't do anything really that bad. He's just out here to win and try to win the championship. And uh, we're just going to try to win this race today. Well, if Garrett Evan needs a little help, take a look at the number 64 on the side of his car. If you're into numerology, take note of this. Garrett Evans became the proud father of a fourth baby daughter this past week. Her weight, according to the NASCAR inspector scale, six pounds four ounces. Maybe a sign. Stay with us. We'll be back to Tucson right after this. Today's exclusive coverage of the NASCAR Winter Heat Series on TNN is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And by Pep Boys Automotive Supercenter.
Welcome back to Tucson Raceway Park for today's edition of Winter Heat. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. The pole sitter on row number one, night number 95, Kenny Shepard on the outside of row one, run, one, Ron Eaton in a Chevrolet. Row number two, that's number 10, Ernie Cope. Number four, Dennis Dyer starts fourth. In row number three, number 70, Chris Trickle, nephew of uh, Winston Cup star Dick Trickle. Number 90, Jeff Crow is on the outside. Row four, Garrett Evans, keep your eye on him. Outside of row four, Daryl Krentz. Row number five, Carlos Serrano on the outside of him is all pro driver Rick Crawford in a Ford. Row number six, that's Frank Baronski Jr. in number 40 on the outside of him, Lance Hooper in 07. Row seven is Ron Hornaday Jr. We've seen a lot of him in winter heat. On the outside of him is the cow car, Randy Olson. Row number eight, Brian Brown. On the inside and on the outside of him is John Walsh in a Chevrolet. Now you look at the rest of the field, buddy. I think this is going to be a heck of a show. We talked about these cars. They're finally underway here. I think this is going to be one of the best shows we've seen up to date in winter heat. Well, Glenn, just watching the men practice, they're exciting. They, they get around the racetrack. They hook up so well through the corners here. They nearly run wide open around this racetrack, and they have so many adjustments on these cars, you just can't believe how well they can make them handle around this racetrack. They run almost a second faster than any other kind of car that runs here. Today's in-car camera is being carried by Rick Crawford in car number 14. As I said, Crawford normally on the uh, all-pro circuit. This is the 360 cam. See it go all the way around. I think Crawford will give us some pretty good shots. We're going to see the camera that we refer to as the dri driver doggy cam. This is on the driver's side. We've seen some great shots from this camera so far. And let's take a look at the bumper cam. We'll see what's coming up on the rear deck on the back bumper of Rick Crawford. Rick Crawford, speaking of him, uh, buddy, let's go down to, uh, to Ralph Shaheen. He's got something on Rick Crawford. Well, Glenn, we talked about the positives that have affected Garrett Evans here with the birth of his daughter, Stephanie, but poor Rick Crawford's had it a little bit tougher. Upon arriving here in Tucson, the dually that pulls his race car out to Tucson was stolen and then found. That's the good news. It was found. The problem is, on the way home, if they want to listen to any music, boys and Rick Crawford's crew are going to have to do a lot of humming because apparently the thieves stripped her down to the ground. Wow, not a very nice welcome to Tucson. Crawford likes to come out here and race. Of course, this is a 200 lap race today. You see the posted awards of $36,350. We have a 26 car starting field. Of course, 200 laps here is 75 miles in. We will have a full field pit stop as we have in the last couple of weeks at the halfway point, 100 laps. They'll red flag the cars, give them about 10 minutes to uh, to work on them, then we'll get underway for the second half of the race. Buddy Crawford, as I said, normally runs in the All-Pro Series. He won one race in the All-Pro Series this week, or this year, but he always likes to come out and run in the Arizona area. Yeah, you don't see many people come from Alabama to run out here in Tucson, but I'll tell you what, every time I've ever seen him, he is very electrifying to watch, and I, I can't wait to see how well he does today. Well, he's a great driver. He starts the 10th position we're going to get the green flag this time i'm interested to see how the uh, the new guy kenny shepherd his first pole handles all that pressure because there's a lot of talented drivers right behind him we're underway well, kenny shepherd got a good jump there but you see the old pro coming up eating on the outside there in the seven car they'll run side by side for a few laps here until the tires get warm and everything right now it's a very treacherous time on this racetrack because everything's not exactly like you want it well, the things are not exactly the way it was when they qualified. There was a good bit of sunshine, and now we're in an overcast uh, situation, a little bit cooler, so the guys were a little bit concerned about the way their cars might handle, but so far, so good, and Shepard has moved by Eaton to take the lead all by himself. See Ernie Cope coming up on the inside, trying to take second spot away. Yeah, I don't Cope. know whether he's going to be able to get under Ron Eaton that easily, though. Yeah, Cope is in that uh, multicolored car number 10. You see him right there as he moves under number four, Dennis Dyer. Uh, Cope was here last week, put on a good show as he ran in the Winston West race, and uh, he likes this type of racetrack. Well, for the people out there that hadn't seen a race on, on Tucson Speedway, you can run three wide in the corners here. It's a perfect racetrack for short track racing. See a spin there with the 21 car. That's Phil Perry. He spun coming off the four, but he spun down into the inside of the racetrack, so there was no caution flag. He was in no one's way, but he is going to lose another lap because of that. In the meantime, Shepard is moving up on him, and Shepard backs off early going into three and allows Ernie Cope to drive right by him. I think that... Uh, that Kenny may have thought they were going to throw a caution, but they did not. Ernie Cook took advantage of it, took the lead away from him. Well, we have a big wreck on the front straightaway here. Well, it all started when I saw car number 25 
That's Carlos Serrano, local guy. He got sideways and then car number 19. That's uh, uh, Tony Toast. Number 32, Chris Shannon. Also number two, you see 25 there going through the infield. That's one good thing about this racetrack. If you spin down to the inside, you don't hit anything. And oh no, there's our buddy Randy Olson in the cow car, number 17. He sustained a lot of damage. So you can see him pulling out uh, the racetrack going into the pits right now. I didn't see what happened there, but boy, they, there were four or five cars got together right here in front of us at the start finish line. We do have another look at it here. Well, what happened here, this was a chain reaction of cars getting together. When anybody really backs off fast here, you can put on the brakes, but just you can see they're kind of collecting each other there. When one car spins, the others are coming so fast that they really can't do anything but kind of touch each other, and they triggered a multi-car spin out there. You see Carlos Serrano, car, car number 25, pulling out. And now here's, take a look at what happened. There's Ron Eaton, number seven. Look at the pole sitter, Kenny Shepard. Wow, car number 25, you see the white car there? Excuse me, car number 95, that is Shepard. He spins coming off of turn two, so a lot of action going around the racetrack. And I think most of it, buddy, was just the fact that, it was, like you said, it was a chain reaction. Guys just maybe overreacted. Well, what you do a lot of times is the brake is your best friend most of the time, but on these short tracks, everybody's back in the throttle so quick that you really have to be careful. We'll be back to continue the action here at Tucson Raceway Park. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. For more information about Featherlight trailers, call 1-800-800-1230. Featherlight, the official trailer of NASCAR. Welcome back once again to Tucson. We're about ready to uh, restart the race. Buddy, you've got a list of the cars that were involved in that crash. Who were they? No, I do not have a list, <laughs> Glenn. Uh, let's see, the 25 car of Serrano. Uh, well, also number two, Bill Lawrence. Number 32, Chris Shannon. Number 19, Tony Toast. And number 10, Ernie Cope. And we also saw the uh, uh, Kenny Shepard, the pole center spin back there. Uh, he's back in the field. He did not lose a lap, did not have to go to the pits. But uh, a lot of cars out early here. Let's go down to Ralph now for a report from the pits. Well, you can see the work going on Randy Olson's cow car, and Randy is standing here with me. Randy, what took place from your perspective? Well, a couple cars had some kind of problem in front of me, and I just got collected up into the deal. I think someone actually spilled some oil on the track, and the car started sliding around in it. It's had a big wreck. To update you on some of the other cars that you mentioned, Ernie Cope has been in and out of the back paddock area. Carlos Serrano has been in and out as well, as has Bill Lawrence. So all of those cars are about ready to go. You can see the work on Randy Olson's car is going to take a little longer. Well, we have our first five cars here. Ron Eaton's leading right now. Dennis Dyer is running second. Jeff Crow is running third. Chris Trickle has moved up to fourth. And uh, Garrett Evans has moved into the top five. And he is really fast on this racetrack, so I look for a lot out of him. It's funny, buddy, how a guy like Evans uh, comes and runs. He doesn't get to run here very often, but he really has taken to this racetrack. He really likes it, and like you said, he's already moved up into the into the top five. But uh, the thing I like about him, uh, there's only one car between he and Ron Hornaday, who has now moved up to seventh. Let's go back to Ralph. He's got more uh, reports from the pits now. Well, we're down here with Carlos Serrano, who is bringing his car to a stop. Carlos, what took place out there from your perspective? Uh, somebody lost it there in the front straightaway. We just got all tangled up and someone got to the rear of me. You got a lot of damage to your car, and you've already been out on the track once. Can you get it fixed enough to go racing? I I, I think so. Well, we got a fitting broke on the train. I think we think said we're done. Crew going to work on the car. He's also got some problems with the driver's side door. A lot of duct tape being used to keep the body panels strapped tight to the sides of the roll cage. Serrano is a very popular driver here in the Tucson area. He's a local guy, and when they announced his name on the starting grid, they got a big roar of approval from the fans. We're getting ready to go back to green flag racing right now. You see Ron Eaton has jumped out to a big lead. He got a good start. Dennis Dyer's had problems right on the get-go there. I don't know whether he missed a gear or what, but he went from second to about 15th in the first little corner there, so he's dropped way out of contention at the moment. Dyer is in, is in car number four, buddy, and he was running in second place, and I think you're exactly right. He did uh, he did take off real slowly there. You see the in-car camera. It's Ron Hornaday on the inside of Rick Crawford, and uh, I'm telling you, I've been here for the past few weeks. On the outside of Hornaday, is not where you want to be because he's going to take that position, and he does. Hornaday moves into fifth position. Well, you can see Hornaday, how fast he gets in the corners. He drives the racetrack a lot like a uh, Winston Cup driver. They get a lot of speed going in the corner. You see him moving up on Garrett there on the outside. He's really got his car hooked up well. Garrett, we see the, the car number 28. 
That's John Walsh is, is uh, spun down off the course. That's coming off of uh, right in the middle of turn number one, and the yellow flag is out. He's sitting in a rather precarious position, but uh, we saw that move that Hornaday made. Man, he is on the move again. He's racing back to the flag now, and the caution is out. We'll be back to uh, update you on the rest of the action. We'll see if Ron Hornaday can continue his march to the front, if Garrett Evans and the rest of the guys have got anything for him. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back once again to Tucson Raceway Park. Ron Eaton leads the field as we're ready for a restart. Let's go down to the pits real quickly for a report from Ralph Shaheen. We were noticing Dennis Dyer had trouble on the start there, the number four car. He had radio to his crew. He thought he broke the transmission. No sooner did he get around to the back stretch when he said everything was okay. Now, buddy, you know how that works. Sometimes a driver just doesn't read things right when he misses a shift. That happens all the time, I tell you. Uh, the gear ratio on these cars is so quick when you jerk it back into high gear a lot of times you let the clutch out before you have it in gear and boy it, that engine will go to about 10,000 before you can check up on it. And you see Mark Crow moving under car number 70 tri Dick Trickle there. Excuse me, Jeff Crow is number 90 moving under Dick Trickle. This is a career run right now for Chris Trickle. They, he's really running well but you see Ron Hornaday going by him on the outside moving into third place. He moves around the car number 90 of Jeff Crow and I'm glad to end Whoa. up. We have contact, contact between Crow and Hornaday there. You can see it. Both cars, in fact, they use each other to straighten each other out. Wow, they've hit again, and now they have taken Danny Crafton into it, and Crow has lost all control. You see him slam into the wall there. Boy, that's unfortunate because both those cars are really running well. Hornaday, meanwhile, was able to continue. That's car number 40, Frank Moronsky, Jr. I thought it was Danny Crafton, but it was Moronsky, and I think number 90, Jeff Crow, is through for the day, buddy. That car looks pretty well used up. Uh, normally, they can, with the fiberglass bodies, they can tear it off and, and go on, but that car looks like it has a lot of structural damage to the right front. We're going to take another look at what happened, and you can see the cars, buddy, when they get together. Watch what happens here. Okay, Hornaday turns down here. He's trying to get under Chris Trickle. They make contact there, and when the 90 car got up in there with him like that, now he's straightening him up, but he's doing a lot of damage to that left front corner also on uh, Ron Hornaday's car. Almost like the cars were hooked together, then they came apart, then they came back together again. And boy, that the uh, 40 car came across in front of Crow there. That's what took the front end off, took all his steering away and knocked him slam into the wall. Tough break for uh, Jeff Crow. He had a great run going, a good qualifying speed, but uh, I believe he's through for today. Once again, take another look. You can see him get together. Look how far sideways Ron Hornaday is there. He's completely 90 degrees around. I can't believe that he got it around, saved it, but had Crow not been there, I don't think he would have, buddy. No, he'd already, he had started to spin all the way around when the 90 car got into him, but you, uh, that's a pretty hard look. That don't look like he's going very fast there, but you go into a concrete wall, it don't matter if you're not running but 10 miles an hour. That's a hard look. Look at Hornaday there. He seems to be okay, but the left front fender is definitely down on the tire. And another look at car number 90 of Jeff Crow. It's going to take a while to sort these guys out and get them off the racetrack. We're going to take a break while they do that. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment with more action. The Tucson Sonora Museum is one of the country's foremost ecological preserves. Wildlife abounds in natural surroundings for everyone to enjoy and to learn from. Those guys look like they were having fun, buddy. <laughs> a little bit of change, you know, I mentioned on that last restart, and what a great start that Ron Eaton got in. Meanwhile, here comes one of the drivers. You can see he is not, uh, not too happy. Let's go down to Ralph Shaheen. He's going to talk to this guy. Well, this would be Jeff Crow. Jeff, what took place? Got squeezed. That's about what happened, you know. Squeezed by the 40 car? I don't, I don't know. Uh, Hornaday got into me, and uh, I don't know who else, who the other guy was, but. What happened when it all started coming off of turn four? Just, we are trying to, you know, everyone's trying to get in the front, you know, and I just got stuck in the middle, you know. I was all trying to get to the front, too, but the way it goes, I guess. A lot of people driving with a lot of enthusiasm, huh? Yeah, everyone wants to get to the front. They all tried to get to the front there, buddy, at, uh, at one time, but they did not make it. You know, Glenn, we got a report on something. Ron Eaton was leading the race, and they black flagged him for jumping the start. Well, they they did, buddy, and now they've red flagged the whole field here on lap number 30. Uh, it's Like I said, it's going to take a little bit of time to get this mess cleaned up. You can see Rick Crawford sitting in his car there. But uh, a lot of, lot of damage to a lot of cars, and they put a lot of fluid on the racetrack, so the NASCAR has decided to red flag the field to give them that chance to, to clean this stuff up. While they do that, 
Let's take a break. We'll be right back with more action. They should have most of the cleanup done. We hope to be back to the restart. Hang on. Stay tuned. Immediately following our broadcast today, stay tuned for Shade Tree Mechanic. This week, Dave and Sam will show you how to rebuild an engine and help you with lower end assemblies. That's tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern on TNN, the Nashville Network. Once again, we have stopped the field here, or NASCAR has stopped the field. We're under red flag while the cleanup continues. The cars will be, uh, in fact, are going to start their engines here very shortly. NASCAR has told us that, uh, that we'll, we'll refire shortly here. Here's what happened. Take a look again at what happened, buddy. Boy, Ron Hornaday just cut down just a little bit. The 90 car got into him and crossed up, and this starts a chain reaction. When they hit again here, you see the 40 car there. He gets really creamed and sends him right up into the wall backwards. Here comes Crow into the wall, almost head on. At the end of his day, I'm pretty sure. Well, I, I think so. Let's take one more look at you. You can see Hornaday trying to get under car number 70. That's Chris Trickle. He thought that he had cleared Crow, but he did not. He got down into him and turned him sideways. You know, Hornaday came out pretty lucky in this whole deal, but watch number 40. You see him trying to sneak by on the inside. That's Frank Moroski. He almost makes it to Hornaday and Crow. Tangle again. That catches Moroski sends him up into the wall. He takes a hard hit also. Glenn, I think we're going to have to wait and see how Ron Hornaday's car handles after that lick. That was a pretty solid lick to the left front corner. When they restart this race, he'll find out whether that car is okay or not. I think so. The cars are moving again. Let's go down to Ralph Shaheen in the pits. Glenn, you ever wonder what a safety fuel cell does? Take a look at this one. This is the back end of Frank Moronsky's car. You can see the cell is crushed. It's pushed in. It's all kinds of warped in different sections, but no ruptures, no fuel leaking out. Everything is safe there. Frank Moronsky is okay. Tell me what happened out there from your standpoint. Uh, I saw the 90 and the 97 car getting together, so I went to the inside to try and miss the whole ordeal, and I just got past him. Then I don't know what happened after that. Something hit me right in the right rear and spun the car backwards the wrong way. Frank is okay. He rode the hook back, and they're going to have to do a little work on this car before the tour comes back to Tucson. Well, Ralph, and I think that Frank will be interested to see the replay. He'll find out exactly what hit him in the right uh, right rear. Also, uh, we'll alert the fans out there that, that uh, Buddy, you made mention that Hornaday would wait and see on the restart. He didn't wait that long. He took his car to the pits. We'll see if we can get a word about that, exactly what's going on. I have to feel like there's some kind of damage to the suspension of that car. Well, I tell you what, I'm impressed by Chris Trickle's performance today. This is probably the first race he's ever led, and he's sitting out there in the number 70 car leading this race right now, being very careful not to get in the kind of wrecks that took these guys to the sidelines just now. Well, tri uh, Chris Trickle is leading, and second is Garrett Evans, number 64, car number 07. Lance Hooper, who is a great runner, who is one of the best, most competitive drivers in the Southwest Tour, is running third right now. In fourth place would be Rick Crawford, and you see number 97 there waiting to come back onto the pits. Let's go back to Ralph. This is Johnny Bohorkas who works on his crew. What's up with Ron's car, Johnny? He says the car's running pretty good right now. Just that little problem there with that car coming off of uh, four there. He got a little bit loose and I don't got up into him. Uh, right now it looks like the fender's rubbing a little bit, but we got it taped up so the hood won't flap anymore. And uh, looks like we'll be all right to go back to the front. Sounds like now it's going to be a wait and see process. Thanks, Johnny. If Ron Hornaday has much to do with it, buddy, it won't be waiting. So he didn't wait too long for anything. I was just fixing to say he's got him right where he wants him. He was three laps down last week in our show here with the Winston West cars, and he made up three laps and ended up winning the race. So this is not that big a setback if the car indeed is in running uh, capacity right now. Well, it, it, it's on the left front. Again, what we, from what we can see, I have to agree with the crewman there. It looks like just cosmetic damage on the left front fender there. Uh, Hornaday weaves the car back and forth. We are getting the one lap to, to go. Uh, signal this time. Chris Trickle will restart the race from the lead. And there is Chris Trickle. You know, buddy, we watched him in practice in the first practice session this morning. I wouldn't have dreamed this guy would have been leading the race because within about a five-minute span of time, we saw him spin the car twice off of turn two, almost collect the wall. He looked like a nickel top in practice, but he looked like a million dollars right now. I tell you, he's really running well. Well, I imagine he feels like a million dollars, too. Chris Trickle, as we said, is the nephew of Winston Cup star Dick Trickle. Chris's father and Dick, our brothers, getting ready for that restart right now. Well, he gets a good jump there, but he's got a man right behind him, Garrett Evans, that really loves this racetrack. You see him trying to get under Chris right now to take the lead, and Garrett Evans has been very, very careful. Now, everybody said they might have a little rivalry when Hornaday got up to him. You see, his car has not got one scratch on it. And he's just biding his time. He knows right now that Ron Hornaday's got to come from the rear and try to get back to the lead. 
He's right up there where it counts right now. Look how low on the racetrack Garrett Evans can run his car. He's very, very smooth. Very rarely ever see Garrett get the car out of shape. Awfully easy to do that down on the bottom of this racetrack. Well, he really wants to go Western Cup racing someday. He said that was the biggest dream he ever want, he wanted to do in his life, was drive one race where a dad could see him in a Western Cup race. I think he'll make it. The man on the move right now, car number 97, Ron Hornaday. How many times in the last couple of weeks, buddy, have we seen this guy come from the back of the pack? You see him moving up on car number 10. That's Ernie Coke trying to take a position away from him. Hornaday is on the move using that outside groove that he does so well. Well, he don't have to worry about the left side either. He's already got the, the damage there, so he can lay on him if he wants to with that left side. You see him coming on the outside. That is a power move on this type of racetrack when you can pass somebody going in the corner on the outside. Buddy, he almost makes it look too easy. Look, I mean, he just, the guys that see him coming, they give him all kinds of room. He really didn't have any trouble right now. I thought maybe some of the cars in the back of the pack would hold him up, but that hasn't been the case. Well, a lot of people don't know that Ron Hornaday Jr. builds a lot of chassis that these guys are racing against him right here. And he knows this car from ground up, and he's a tremendous mechanic. So I think he has an advantage right there. Well, I, def I agree. We asked Ron Hornaday before the race, if there was a special touch to setting up these southwest cars to get them to go around the racetrack well there's no touch it's, it's, it's a matter of they're a light car compared to what i've been running with the truck and everything you can actually throw these around a little bit more and you can use the tires a little harder than the, you know the bigger cars these are a little more fun like a sprint car type deal not not as say so but i mean you can throw the car into the corner and really run hard with them and you see hornaday continue to work the traffic because last week he had that uh, he was, he was three laps down, like you said, buddy. He doesn't have that to contend with this week, just coming back through the pack. That's what Bobby Lyons there in the 44 car. He's won several races here. Uh, Hornaday goes by him. I tell you right now, Ron Hornaday, definitely the fastest car out there. But he's got to make it to the front and then try to get by Garrett Evans and Chris uh, Trickle here. You, these guys are really running well right now. Well, Trickle doing an awfully good job. He continues to hold off Garrett Evans. Evans continues to put the pressure on him. You can see, looks to me like, though, he might be biding his time a little bit, uh, just waiting perhaps for Chris, for Chris Trickle to make another mistake. You see, see right now what Chris is doing. He's running the preferred line through these corners. He's got that race car dialed in where it feels the best to him. So right now, Garrett Evans has got to try to find some way to find the fault in how he's getting through the corners to make his move. And he almost did it right there. He crossed it up just a little bit, and you can see Garrett Evans move right in on the back bumper again. Well, Chris Trickle, as I said, doing a good job. Chris is based in Las Vegas, away from the racing center. We asked him, Chris, how tough is it racing with your base in Las Vegas? Um, it's not too difficult. The, the tracks, the closest track we have from Vegas, besides Vegas, is four hours away, which makes it pretty tough. But the biggest thing is, uh, if we were if we were back in the Midwest or something, we could race two and three times a week rather than oppose just on one a week. You know, one race per weekend. Sometimes not even that. You know, sometimes we don't even get that much. And uh, the the experience factor is the biggest the biggest difference. I'd like to be just get more track time on the track and. Well, and while he was talking, you saw Garrett Evans make that pass there. You see car number 32, Chris Shannon. He spun coming off of turn two. He has got the car going again, and there was no caution. Yeah, you see Shannon's got a lot of damage there. It looked like he might have run in the back of somebody. The right front fender was kind of bowed up, but they did not throw the caution because he was out of harm's way. Once, once again, there's Ron Hornaday moving up on the uh, fourth and fifth place cars. He has moved up into sixth now. I believe he is on the move, buddy. Those cars won't hold him up long. He may make it three wide. Look at him. He's very bottom of the racetrack, and he gets in the speedy drive. <laughs> that guy makes John Dillinger look like a, like a kindergarten robber. I'm going to tell you right now, this guy is brave. He don't mind putting that car anywhere he has to put it and try to get that spot. <laughs> no, he certainly doesn't. Ralph Shaheen? Glenn, you know, I was talking with Ron Hornaday before the start of the race today, and his driving style is very similar to what you would see on a dirt track. He barrels down the straightaway like he's doing now at the front stretch, and as he comes down to turn one, he literally flicks the car into the corner. And right there at the center of the turn, he says he hopes the car hooks up, catches, and throws him back down the back stretch. So it's a more of a dirt track style of driving. He says the G's in the corners are pretty tremendous. It's just like if you're driving down the interstate, you come to a corner and you blow a tire and the car just hooks on you. <laughs> he don't mind taking that spot when he gets there. I tell you, what he's doing, though, that looks like he's just too aggressive. But what he's doing, he's making sure he's buying. Then he pulls directly over. He hasn't hit anybody when he starts to pass on 
when he's on the bottom like that. He clears them just enough, but he does take that preferred line away from them where they have to kind of worry about whether he's going to be fast enough for them not to run in back of them. You see that Ron Hornaday has moved from the rear of the field back up into the top five. It took him less than 15 laps to do that. Glenn, that left front is rubbing just a little bit. You can see it hazing just a little bit when he goes through the corner there when it's turned left, but I don't believe it's going to be enough to make him blow a turn. I don't think it'll cause him any problems, but a great battle going on for sixth place between number four, that's Dennis Dyer, and number 34, Doug McCowan. Now, Doug normally runs up front to car number 34 there. He had a bad qualifying effort, but he has moved his way through the field, now battling for fifth position. Well, McCowan uh, is really super good on these type of racetracks, and you see him taking that bottom line right now. That's going to be very, very hard to get by Dyer on the inside like that. You can run as fast as you can get the momentum off the corner that the outside car does. Let me correct myself. That battle is for sixth position. Ron Hornaday is currently in the fifth position. McCowan's car, he's told us during practice that he said the car felt very neutral, but since the weather changed, I think it may have caused him a few problems. You see the white car coming into the picture? That's Kenny Shepard. He was the pole sitter. Remember, he spun, had to go back in the pack. He is now ready to challenge for sixth and seventh position also. Well, Glenn, he fell way back when he did spin there, and you see him starting to work his way back up there. He just, he's got himself in good contention right now. Caution flag. Oh, we got... Whew. I'm going to tell you, McCowan, the far enough sideways, if I'd have been in the 95 car Shepard, I would have had to get on the brakes. We got... We got Ron Eaton in number seven and car number 66. That's Mark Meach who won the qualifier race to, to get in this show today. They have spun on the backstretch. The caution flag has come out now. This will give them a chance to, uh, to bunch the field up. This is lap number 58. I don't think that Garrett Evans wanted to see that caution flag. Garrett continues to lead here. We'll be back to continue further action from Tucson Raceway Park. A lot of excitement going on today. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And you see the fans here at Tucson Raceway Park. They're happy to be here, as are we. Caution laps continue. Got the in-car camera here. You see uh, car number 19. That's uh, what's Tony Toast coming up. Watch this close call. That's Garrett Evans in number 64. This is what caused the caution right before we went to break. You see number 66, Mark Creech, and number 7, Ron Eaton. Garrett Evans just barely cleared those guys. That's twice, and we're back underway in green flag racing. Evans has had a couple of close calls, buddy. Both those last caution flags have been right in front of him. Well, I'm sure Garrett Evans was really hoping that everybody stayed on the brakes there. If they'd have released the brakes there and shot back up at racetrack, they'd have collected him in that, but uh, everybody did the right thing. As the battle, there's Chris Trickle trying to move on the outside of the lap car number two. He was in that first wreck. That's Bill Lawrence. Caused Chris a little bit of delay, allowed Garrett Evans to get away a little bit. Up on the outside, you saw Ron Hornaday in that blue and white number 97. He has now moved into third position. He's right on the rear deck lid of Chris Trickle. You know, I said earlier that he might be a lap down. He wasn't a lap down. He had to go to the rear because he went to the pits, but he did not lose the lap, and he's right back in there fighting for the lead. Yeah. Well, now he's in second. <laughs> <laughs> we can't speak it. We can't say it fast enough, buddy. By the time we tell he's gained a position, he's taking another one. I saw his car going into turn one that time. Got a little bit loose, uh, like he might be having a little bit of a toe-in problem. Certainly hadn't slowed him down much. No, I'd say right here... We, we talked earlier uh, before we started the show about these two guys having a little bit of trouble last week. Uh, Garrett Evans and uh, Ron Hornaday Jr., they're running first and second right now, and it's going to be interesting when they get together here. And here you see the battle to, uh, between Doug McCowan, number 34, and number 14, Rick Crawford. Cro and with the in-car camera from Crawford. Crawford's car looked to be a little bit loose coming off of turn four that time, buddy. Look how low the quarter panels on these cars are. They're almost dragging. You can see from our camera there, when they went through the corner there, the McCowan's car was almost dragging. You can see the right side is right down on the table. Well, that battle is for fifth position. Crawford doing a good job of holding him off. McCowan takes another run at him underneath. Just can't quite keep it, uh, keep the power up when you go down low on this racetrack. Well, Glenn, if you drive from Alabama to race, you're going to race pretty hard, I'm going to tell you right now. But these guys, they love their racing. you imagine driving from Alabama to Tucson, Arizona to run a race? Well, we talked about that long trip that, uh, that Crawford made to run this race. I wonder if he's got a surprise for these guys out here. Well, I tell you, he's a surprise. Any, anytime we watch him run, he's always up near the front of the pack, and uh, this guy is a tremendous competitor. At Phoenix, he's very exciting to watch. Well, he had uh, one win in NASCAR's All-Pro Series this year, finished, I believe, up in the top five in the point standings. 
And as we spoke earlier, Crawford likes to come out into Arizona and run. He's finished third the last couple times at Phoenix. What if you got a surprise for some of these guys, Rick? Not necessarily. Uh, you know, we got a, a, ra a big race, Snowball Derby, uh, 60 miles from my home. But I'll travel 26 hours to come to this race because it's on TNN, live on television. So I'm trying to go Winston Cup racing. I'm trying to look for a sponsor. Or, uh, I, well, we sort of got a sponsor, but I'm trying to look for a, a ride in the Winston Cup and move on up. So I got to get out and get some exposure on TNN. Well, he certainly got the right idea, doesn't he, buddy? Boy, I tell you what, I'm pulling for him. I don't <laughs> oh, that's too bad. McCowan's car is slowing on the inside of the racetrack here. He's, he's no longer able to keep up with the uh, cars that he was racing just a second ago. And you saw uh, McCowan ran here earlier in the year in the Southwest Tour, finished fourth. Let's go back to the leaders, Garrett Evans, with number 97, Mr. Hornaday, right on his bumper. I'm not sure Garrett Evans is going to be able to hold Ron Hornaday off. i tell you what, Ron Hornaday is getting in the corner about a full car lift deeper than anybody on the racetrack. Yellow flag is out. We have trouble on the front straightaway. Wow, again, car number 15, that's Daryl Prince. Uh, also, car number 28, you see, sitting there on the front stretch, that's John Walsh. There was one other car involved. He spun and went on, but the two cars with damage. Again, car number 15, that's Daryl Krenz and 28, John Walsh. A little bit of a fire. We can take another look at it. Let's see exactly what happened there. Oh, he, came, he comes right across the racetrack. That's Walsh. He got into the wall, and he clipped Daryl Krenz. Daryl just the victim of circumstances that time. See some smoke coming from the number 28. There was a little bit of a fire. You see uh, uh, John walking away there. He is out of the car, and okay, I think it... Uh, uh, took his breath a little bit, a little smoke inhalation, but uh, he did walk away on his own power. Yeah, you can see him kind of rubbing his left hand there. Uh, when you hit the wall like that, nine out of ten times, the wall will snatch the steering wheel in your hand, and sometimes it'll make you feel like you broke your thumb. Well, let's take advantage of this caution period. We'll be back with more action from the NASCAR Featherweight Southwest Tour. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us today. We've got a great evening of motorsports ahead on NHRA Today, the 1994 NHRA Pro Stock Motorcycle Year in Review with highlights of Dave Schultz. And on Inside Winston Cup, hosted by Ned Jarrett, I know that guy, this week featuring an interview with Rookie of the Year Jeff Burton and an interview with Dick Trickle, who will talk about his new sponsor for the 1995 season. We're back here at Tucson Raceway Park. There's the driver. That's John Walsh, who was the driver of car number 28. We saw him get out before we went to break. A little bit of a burn maybe on his left hand there. We saw him putting some ointment on him. He seems to be okay, though. Uh, evidently just a superficial burn. Uh, John's okay. He seems sitting on the wall there. I can't say the same for his race car, though. It doesn't look too okay. Pretty well used up. Uh, right front fender's still okay, but from uh, about midway of the front fender across there, it's pretty well gone. There's nothing left there. A lot of damage. There certainly is the whole front end torn off of that car. The top five after lap 75 is uh, Garrett Evans. Ron Hornaday is in second. Chris Trickle's in third. Kevin Harvick is in the uh, 55 car in fourth place. And fifth is Rick Crawford. Well, at the conclusion of today's Featherlight Southwest Tour feature, we will be presenting the Pet Boys Quality Pit Crew of, pit crew of the Race Award. Of course, the pit crews always vie for that, and uh, been some pretty happy recipients of that. So far, I've had the pleasure of, of giving those guys that $500 check, and they like that. Well, Glenn, you've been in a race race car before. One thing race car drivers are fond of is checks and, and green. <laughs> Legal tender. Well, we saw car number 34, Doug McCowan, make a pit stop earlier on. Let's go down to Ralph and find out what happened. Well, the problem for the number 34 was ignition. He uh, thought he had a problem with that. He switched the box over, and everything is okay now. For car number 34, the engine came right back to life, and Doug McCown's in pretty good shape now. Well, with the exception of being a few laps down, McCown's an awfully good uh, competitor, buddy. I hate to see him have that trouble. I also, uh, uh, before that break, car number 44, Bob Lyons, who won a race here earlier in the year. He had to go back to the pits. He had rear problems. He has since come back out. Glenn, you see him wiggling the wheel back and forth here. You pick up a lot of rubber and debris off the racetrack, and it's very important to get it off your tires before you go back. But, you know, we were talking to some of the guys, and they run as little as 18 pounds air pressure on the left side and somewhere between 25 and 30 pounds on the right side. So they're about flat on the left side. When they jerk a car back, you see them get real sideways and jump back on the left side of those tires. It's very critical to be able to hold that car because the air pressure is so low. 
Accommodations are provided by the Viscount Suites Hotel. The Viscount Suites are the place to stay in, stay in Tucson. Call 1-800-527-9666 for reservation and more information. Buddy, you were talking about the tires there. One thing we might want to point out, too, that we are seeing Hoosier and Goodyear tires in use here today. Uh, we talked to some of the guys earlier on and uh, didn't seem to re really be uh, a whole lot of favoritism, except a couple of the guys told us that the, the Hoosiers might hold their speed a little bit longer during the race, but I don't think we've seen that to be the case so far. Well, it was very hot when they were trying out this morning. It was like in the middle 70s, and now it's overcast here. It's starting to cool off quite a bit, and uh, what was good earlier today may not be quite as well now. Well, we're getting the signal for one to go here. See Garrett Evans again cleaning his tires off. Buddy, we, we talked about the tires. Springs are important, uh, as important part of a race car here as anything. Yeah, well, these are coilovers. You see the small spring on the outside of the shock itself there. These are little coilovers, and you notice that A-arm there is adjustable, so you can really work on these cars to make them perfect. Uh, that's the cow car there, minus the horns. You see the front's been knocked off of that thing, but... Uh, that gives you a good idea of these coilovers. They can do a lot of chassis adjustments, and they work on them very quickly and make adjustments. Like when they stop at the halfway point, you'll see them really go to work on these cars, and they can do something to really help them here. And Garrett Evans, once again, jumps out to the lead on the restart here, lap 183, 17 laps before we have a, uh, a halfway caution period or halfway break. The way Ron Hornaday is already putting the pressure on. I was just fixing to say, Ron Hornaday is trying to get by him on the outside. You can believe one thing, Garrett Evans is looking in that mirror, and anything he tries to do right now is not going to be easy. Buddy, any, uh, you know, like I said, we got a halfway break coming up. Is there any advantage to, uh, to being a leader at the halfway point? Yeah, you're leading at the halfway point. That's about it. You can say, hey, we're just about one, or we're leading at halfway. But when they start adjusting on these cars and making different changes on them, the, the car that's running fifth might be the dominant car when they come back. Well, now you see Evans has pulled away for a, to a little bit, about a, about a six or seven car length lead over Hornaday. Maybe uh, got off to a little bit better start there. Hornaday had it on his bumper, but Garrett Evans continues to pull away a little bit now. Well, Glenn, right now we're about 12, uh, right at 12 laps before uh, we have our halfway uh, break here. And I'm sure he's not going to do anything to jeopardize the situation towards the end of this. Well, we... We told you that this is a NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour event. Uh, Garrett Evans is the defending champion of the Northwest Series Tour. Big rivalry going on between these guys. The Northwest Tour guys love to come down to the Southwest Tour to take their money. You know, one thing I found out, people that are champions and, and race winners, they don't matter what division they're in. You put them in a good race car and they'll run up front no matter what division you put them in. Well, that's true. Uh, Garrett Evans, we had a chance to talk with him last night. And, our, and earlier today, we asked him if the Northwest Tour drivers think they're a little bit better than the Southwest Tour guys. I think you got guys like myself and Ron Eaton and uh, Dan Press and stuff that's been around for a long time, and you're only good at your competition. And when you got guys of that caliber running with you every week, it makes it a little bit better. A very diplomatic answer there. He didn't want to make any enemies, did he? <laughs> Got a good battle for third going on here right now. You see Rick Crawford on the outside in car number 14, and car number 55 has sneaked up under him. That's Kevin Harvick. You see from the in-car camera of Crawford, you see uh, Harvick's car on the inside there. This guy, very young kid, he won a track championship in Southern California at the tender age of 16. We have a caution flag out now. You see car number 21, that's uh, Chris Perry, or excuse me, Phil Perry, has nailed the wall and has come to a stop. That looks like he might have cut a tire. He's sitting in a very, very strange place to have any other thing happen, but maybe have a tire go flat in the middle part of the corner. And just kind of looks like he went up there. There's not a lot of damage to the right side, or don't appear to be. No, it doesn't. You can't see uh, too much sheet metal damage from this angle. He's, he's sitting right against the wall. Of course, he's already lost a lap, uh, at least one lap, under this uh, uh, caution period. And I think he was involved in one of those earlier cautions, so he was a couple of laps down. And we just have information uh, from Ralph Shaheen that he did cut a tire and has come to stop against the wall. You see the NASCAR officials have run up there. I guess they're going to have to get the tow truck. Yeah, I see it coming out now to pull him away. Glenn, you see these guys right here. 
they're the heroes of racing. They run out there with the fire extinguisher, make sure these guys are okay. You see him out there. Now he's directing the guy back into the pit area. And as Perry pulls his car number 21 away from the wall, we're going to take a break. We'll be back for more action. We've got a few more laps before the halfway break. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. And the field has just taken the green flag to restart the race. We're working lap number 97 right now. We've just been told by NASCAR that they will run to lap 101 before we have the halftime break. Normally that would have come at lap 100. But you see Garrett Evans continues to hold off car number 97, Ron Hornaday. And Evans gets a little high and gives Hornaday some room underneath. Yeah, you see her, uh, Hornaday come off the corner. He goes right out to the wall when he comes off the corner. See Garrett Evans taking a little bit lower line. He's not giving him the outside or the lower side. Buddy, I see a little bit of wiggle in Hornaday's car. I got a feeling he's really just biding his time right now. I think he might have a little excess tire wear. I think the tow has got to be a little bit off on that car from that wreck earlier on. Well, one nice thing about these cars, they are very adjustable. So at halftime, he can make it perfect again. And he is definitely the man to, uh, to adjust it because in addition to driving a race car, he also has a race car chassis business. He builds a lot of the chassis that are in the, uh, uh, in the field here today. We have just completed lap 100 and taken the caution flag. Uh, Ron Eaton, car number seven spun. You can see him coming off of the uh, fourth turn. That's why we got the caution a lap earlier than what NASCAR had said. Uh, Eaton has not had a good day since he was leading the race and, uh, and, and jumped the restart and got black flagged to the back. He's had nothing but trouble. Well, I tell you, working your way back up through the crowd like that, you really have to be careful because you can make one mistake in your history. Well, we have reached the lap 101 uh, portion of the race. You see the red flag flying there. The cars will all exit the racetrack, go to the pit area for whatever repairs that, uh, that they want to make. We'll see some tire changes and I'm sure a lot of chassis adjustments. While they're moving to the pits, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with some reports from Ralph Shaheen from the pits. Don't go away. You see the top five there. We'll be right back to more action here at Tucson. Well, welcome back to Tucson Raceway Park in Tucson, Arizona, as we are contesting the Featherlight Southwest Tour the NASCAR Southwest Tour stock cars. You are looking live at Garrett Evans' machine. This is a car that has led a good chunk of the first half of the race. Garrett, your crew under the leadership of John Vickery making a lot of changes here. What are you having them do? Well, we're just changing new, uh, putting the rubber on. Goodyear tires are working real good for us and hopefully we're bringing home the second 100. It was pretty wild that first 100 laps as far as the amount of action between the drivers. Do you expect the same in the second half here? No, I think uh, they'll settle down a little bit. Of course, when it comes down to the last 50, everybody's going to be going for the win and then they'll turn up the wick a little bit. But I think most of the crashers are kind of out in the first 100. Well, the guy you're really going to have to contend with is Ron Hornaday. He's a little beaten and battered. Does that uh, change your strategy on him? Well, it don't look like it was hurting him any. He was putting a pretty good pace up there. Garrett Evans, Glenn, will be the guy to lead him to the green when we go green once again. Well, Ralph, Garrett certainly uh, doesn't waste any time uh, giving his side or giving his the way that he sees things. He knows the Hornaday's car is not too badly damaged, buddy. Well, that's exactly right. And Ron Hornaday, you can bet one thing about Garrett Evans. He's looking in the mirror as much as he is at the windshield right now because he knows one of the most aggressive drivers out here is right on his bumper in second place. I think it's fun when, when we talk to Evans. We got to, to uh, uh, see him a little bit last night and, you know, away from the racetrack, a different setting. Really uh, cool, low-key kind of guy. He doesn't seem to get too excited about anything. Well, he's pretty talkative at night, but when he uh, starts mashing the accelerator on this race car, he starts giving direct answers, real fast answers, but that's kind of what a real race car driver does. He really tune in when it's time to tune in, and uh, last night you couldn't hardly shut him up, and today it's one answer, and that's it. <laughs> well, he's got a little bit more on his mind today. Let's go back down to the pits with Ralph Shaheen. Well, you can see crew chief Bill Sedgwick for Ron Hornaday's crew has really got the crew working feverishly on this one. In fact, Ron is talking to some of the crew members right now. Ron, this car has been beaten and battered pretty good here in the first 100 laps. How's she handling? Well, I tell you, the car is just great. I mean, we did a fine job. We, uh, we worked uh, with the chassis all day, and we just missed qualifying. I really drove it in too hard qualifying. But, uh, you know, we had some modifications in the beginning of this thing. And uh, we got back there. I knew the car was fast. I just got to drive the wheels off. And uh, maybe I'll get a break this half and just run up front with Garrett and hopefully save the tires. I didn't have nothing for him there because I just burned the tires off getting back to the front. All right, now that you've caught him, and like you are like you said, you're going to have fresh tires on the machine, how do you get around him and hold him off in the final 100? 
I'll let you know on lap 90. I really don't know. He's a, he's a witty guy. Uh, he's been doing this a long time. We've been racing a long time together. So we'll go out there and do the best we can. Uh, I'm real happy the way the thing's running, so I think we got something for him. She might not look real pretty, gentlemen, but she is flying. The number 97 machine of Ron Hornaday Jr. Well, he doesn't seem too awfully concerned, does he, buddy? No, Ron Hornaday does never seem too concerned, but he's a great race car driver, and Garrett Evans is very aware of, of his uh, talents and everything, and right now they're both. It's going to be a chess match, but don't forget all these other people back here. Rick Crawford, he may move up there and give them a real challenge. I wouldn't count any, anybody in the top ten. No, there's certainly a lot of good quality, capable cars uh, behind them. Let's take one more look at that crash that uh, Ron Hornaday was involved in. Now, you see him move on number 90 there. That's Jeff Crow. He and Crow get together. Now look how this straightens Hornaday's car back up. They seem to be okay right now. And you see number 40, Karonsky move under him right there. He gets clipped. Hornaday and Crow go back together. And then Jeff Crow goes right across the racetrack into the wall. Puts an end to his day. Luckiest guy in the world right there with Ron Hornaday Jr. that he did not get hurt worse than he did. All right, we'll be back for more coverage on the halftime here at Tucson Raceway Park. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. And we're back once again to Tucson Raceway Park. Of course, today's event is the NASCAR Southwest Featherlight Tour 200. We're in the halftime break right now. Caution car awaits the uh, field's return. Before the uh, Southwest Tour race started today, we had the local guys, the Grand American Modifieds, running a 30-lap feature. And, buddy, they put on quite a show. Well, they did, Glenn. These cars run on 8-inch tires, which are 2 inches narrower than the Western Cup cars run on. And they really get loose. After about 4 or 5 laps, these cars started getting really sideways. Yeah, girly boy. Great drivers, though. They were able to maintain these cars and put on a heck of a show. Well, you see, the uh, that's the pole sitter there. Number one, Jeff Gibson getting sideways and getting into the leader and the eventual winner, number 28, Carl Trevor. And you see... Uh, Gibson there comes up, almost just gives him a little bit of a shot there, a little bit of a nudge, but uh, doesn't really get him out of shape. Heck of a job by Carl Trimmer. He won this race. This was his first race ever in an open-wheel car. He was this track's 1994 super late model champ in full body cars. First start ever in an open-wheel car, and he won the race. Well, it's exciting racing because these guys really put on a show. They fought from the green flag to the checkered flag, and a lot of fun to watch. See Chris Trickle's car sitting there, car number 70. Chris had a good run in the first, uh, first part of the race. We'll be back for the start of the second half of winter heat here today, right after this message. Don't go away. This should be a barn burner to the finish. If you're like me and tired of the winter cold, Tucson has five world-class resorts that feature golf and tennis. Mix that with a trip to see us in winter heat, and you have a great chill stopper for this winter. That's pretty stuff, isn't it, buddy? Oh, boy. The cars are being re-lined up now. You can see them. We're going to have the restart order here. Of course, leading is car number 64, Garrett Evans, right on his bumper. Number 97, Ron Hornaday, Jr. Third is Heaven Carvick. Harvick, a great run for Kevin. He's, like I said, a young driver, not much experience. Fourth is the old pro, Rick Crawford. Fifth, Dennis Dyer who started fourth and sixth, Doug McCowan, has moved back up into the top ten. He's running sixth. Seventh is Kenny Shepard, the pole sitter. Number eight, good job still by Chris Trickle. Ninth is Danny Crafton. Tenth, Brian Brown. Eleventh, Ernie Cope. And twelve, Mark Meach. You see number 13 there, Eaton. Tony Toast, Chris Shannon, Lance Hooper, Phil Perry, Bill Lawrence, and Bob Lyon, former winner here, Randy Olson in the cow car. Carlos Serrano, who was involved in that uh, early crash, he came out worse for the wear on that car, number 25, but he is back on the racetrack. You can see his car right there, and it doesn't look too good. Well, that just in front of him there, that 07, the cow car, wasn't exactly a thing of beauty either, but uh, these guys, when they find out that they're going to have TV coverage, look at this. Now, that's determination. You want to race when you take one back on the racetrack and look for a cow. It's not a cow car anymore, but it's a calf car. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Moving right along. That's it. Now, that's no bull. <laughs> here we go again. You see the cars are uh, stacking up there as they get down in the middle of turns one and two. You see the beautiful mountains there off in, uh, in the, uh, the distance. Next week on Winter Heat, here again from Tucson Raceway Park in Tucson, Arizona, 
next Sunday, December 11th, live at 5 p.m. Eastern. We'll see the NASCAR Super Trucks by Craftsman again. We just got word that our old buddy Winston Cup driver, Ken Schrader, will be here to run that truck race. Buddy. There was never a doubt in my mind if they race more than two or three times that Kenny Schrader would be here. He loves to race. He probably run, he's the most active race car driver in the United States, without a doubt. He runs four or five times a week. And I tell you what, he's going to love this truck, the Super Truck Series, because it is so much fun. Well, he's had a few weeks off from the Winston Cup circuit now. He's got the banquet behind him. He went up on stage and made his talk. Got his money, so he's ready to spend some of it now. Come out here in the, in the warm desert southwest and race a truck. If they just had two hot dogs and a, and a good cold beer, Kenny Schrader would be here. I tell you what, he loves to race. It'll be interesting to see how uh, how he gets along with Rick Dorelli, Ron Hornaday, and all the rest of the guys in the Super Truck Series. We're about ready to go racing. You see the official, the flagman, giving the one-to-go signal. The cars are bunched up once again, cleaning off the tires, making sure that everything is just so. Buddy, we're going to find out real quickly if Hornaday had any uh, adjustments to make to the car, if he made those, and if Garrett Evans can uh, can hold them off. Let's go back to Ralph right quick. You know, I got to go with Ron Hornaday on this one, gentlemen. I think with the added experience of Bill Sedgwick, who's also a former West Coast standout, I think those two really know how to set this car up right for this racetrack. And I think Ron Hornaday's got him right where he wants him at this point. Garrett Evans restarts the field on lap 102. Takes his car safely down in the middle of the racetrack. He's going to make Hornaday make a move. And you see Ron slip up to the outside just a little bit. Look, what they're doing right now is just kind of, this is a sparring match right now. You see Hornaday on the bottom side. He moves up. He takes the spot right away. Now, just before they went away to break, when they were on the used tires, they couldn't do that to Garrett Evans. But he made that pass look pretty easy. Well, instead of a sparring match, it turned out to be a knockout punch by Hornaday. Man, he drove by him with almost no effort, buddy. Well, what looks easy sometimes isn't that easy, but that, right behind them is another group that's really fighting it out. You see Kevin Har Harvick there that's running very well today, and uh, Dennis Dyer right in the four car uh, running right behind him. Those guys are duped it out. Rick Crawford is the number 14 car there, the second one in that group. They have battled, I mean, from the time Green Flag come out to this point in the race. Well, we've got real close battling all over the racetrack right now. And, uh, that battle for second, third, fourth, and fifth that we're looking at right there, you, you see the, uh, the real pretty day glow orange, black and yellow car of Dennis Dyer, car number four. And Dennis started in fourth. He is currently running in the fifth position right behind Rick Crawford, who's carrying the camera car. He's giving us that shot. You know that bumper cam, I know for the people back home, it's a lot of fun to see. But every time I looked at the crowd like that, I was in big trouble. That means I was looking through the windshield the wrong way down the straightaway, and I was in big trouble. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't have any car cameras back then. If you saw that, you were in deep stuff. Again, Kevin Harvick in car number 55 there, who is running third right ahead of Rick Crawford at 14. Harvick is doing, I think, a tremendous job. Very, very little experience, and uh, I think that kid's going to be a racer. Already got a track championship under his belt. He won that, like I said earlier, at the tender age of 15. Good job by Kevin today. And you see Rick Crawford right there from the great state of Alabama. He's, he drove 2,600 miles to run this race, and he's going to fight his way back up toward the front as he possibly can. He didn't come out here to run third or fourth here. No, not that's that's pretty much any good racer will always tell you. You ask your crew, you know, with 15 laps to go on a lot of races, you say, should I take a chance of winning or, or sit right here in second? They said, we didn't come to run second. Well, you see car number four there, Dennis Dyer, as I said, was in fifth spot. Car number 95 is the pole sitter. That's Kenny Shepard, and he's right down on the bottom. They've got those fresh tires on there. Those guys think they can just pass them down on the apron, but uh, couldn't pull it off that time. But Shepard has fought his way back through the field, moved back into the sixth position. You see the car bobbling just a little bit there. He's still got a little bit of a loose condition. You'll have to watch where he runs on the racetrack because he might come for us. He really tries to run too low on the racetrack. It's awfully easy to, to want to do that here, isn't it, buddy? You know, we, we got to run some laps in the trucks, and uh, the racetrack is so inviting, so conducive of trying to pull it down low, just like Shepard does right there. You can pull up under the guy, but you lose the speed coming off the turn. Well, that was a good example. He drove in, looked like he had almost a car length lead in the center part of the corner when he picked the throttle up there. He couldn't get back on the throttle because the car was trying to slide out on him. 
and he's still determined to make it work down there. He's right down on the bottom. You could almost park the semi between those two guys, the way uh, the distance between them in the turns. That might be the move he was looking for. You see the car skid out just a little bit there, and, and Dyer is really making him earn that spot. If he gets it, he's going to have to earn it because he's not going to give it to him. Well, I just wonder, you know, doing this this early on, he's on fresh tires right now, but is that not going to hurt Shepard later on in the race using his tires up? It's certainly not going to help him because down there, the left bank, you see the car really breaks loose coming off that corner there. He does that about four or five more times. He's going to generate about 15 degrees extra heat in the right front over the right. I mean, in the right rear rather than the right front. You see the view from outside of uh, Rick Crawford's car again. Again, Crawford running in the fourth position right now. And as the battle continues between Dyer and Shepard, you can see the distance that it allows Rick Crawford to pull away from those two. They were right on his bumper. Now back to that battle. It takes an awful lot of discipline to make that pass down low. Oh, it does that. You noticed a while ago when the cars were going down the straightaway, you see the lights on the front straightaway. Now, last week they had a glare problem from the sun. This week we have some overcast and, and just a slight chance that we might get a little precip a little bit later on. But right now, that's a perfect ride right there. When you have the lights on like that, you talk about seeing everything. You can see perfect around this race track. And you can see the lights have been turned on here. And also, Dyer's car starts to get a little loose as he continues the battle. But, boy, while they're racing side by side, that's letting some other guys come up uh, right behind them. And also, as I said, Rick Crawford has just pulled away and left them completely. Once again, Kenny Shepard takes her down to the inside to try to pick up that position. Well, Shepard almost had the position on him there. If he'd have moved up, I think he might have been okay, but he didn't quite feel that he had made the pass, so he had to drop back again. Well, Shepard, is, yeah, he's falling back in line now. Maybe going to cool his tires just a little bit. You know, maybe Kenny sees what we see off to the uh, off to the west here, some rain showers moving across the mountains. They're about uh, maybe 6, 8, 10 miles from us here. They're not threatening here right now, but uh, maybe those guys see the rain clouds coming too. We'll to get that position while they can. See Shepard make that try down low again, coming off of turn two as they go down the back stretch into turns three and four. Meanwhile, back up front, Garrett Evans has moved right back up onto the rear bumper of Hornaday. You see Ron Hornaday right now. He's running a big, wide arc, getting in the corner. He's really being careful right now not to abuse his tires and, and to keep uh, Garrett Evans in second place. Well, we were curious about uh, the... Uh, uh, condition of Hornaday's car. Let's go down to Ralph Evans. He can update. Well, it's been interesting, Glenn. I mean, he pulled out a tremendous lead over Garrett Evans for quite a few laps and was just really stretching it out. Then just about three laps ago, he really ran it hot into turn number one and two. Overcooked it, put the car totally sideways, smoked him up big time, and Garrett Evans has closed right up on him now as they fight their way through the traffic. He is forced to the outside, but that's exactly where he wants to be. He told me that that is a preferred line for him around this racetrack. He said there's a lot of rubber down from the Winston West race, and he expected that the later stages of this race would see the front-running cars going farther and farther out to the outside wall. In fact, down the back straightaway, Hornaday and Evans are so close to the back stretch wall that you could not slip sideways through that car and, and the wall. And believe me, it has nothing to do with the amount of turkey I ate at Thanksgiving. You just can't fit in there. Well, right now, Hornaday is using the is using the lap traffic to uh, to help keep Evans behind him. And we have a radio report also that uh, there's a possibility you see him move right out to the wall right there. That that completely eliminates any move on the outside coming uh, coming off the corner. There Evans turns it down low. You see his car break loose. We have a radio report now uh, between uh, Hornaday and his crew that uh, Hornaday might have a left rear tire going down, buddy. Well, you'll be able to tell pretty quick here. The car will get looser and looser. We'll keep an eye on him, but right now, Garrett Evans is definitely coming right back on him. He's trying to make a pass, and he couldn't do that 10 laps ago. You see Evans underneath him there, trying that bottom groove again. Can't pull it off this time. We just got to report to car number 34. Doug McCowan has pulled behind the wall. Looks like it might be the end of the day for him. So he had his troubles today, fought back into the top 10, but uh, looks like he's had the partner. Well, Glenn, a lot of times on a, on a short track like this, uh, three-inch mile, the car will get a little bit loose, and you'll think a tire's going flat. You'll start talking to everybody, saying, I think I got a tire going flat, and then you run four or five laps and let everything maintain there around the racetrack. You cool the tires back down, and you say, okay, everything's okay, let's go. 
you know, it's possible he could have maybe hit some fluid or something on the racetrack when he turned it sideways down there, and then he, he drove hard when Evans got up under him a couple of laps there. Like you say, he did the tires up a little. He uh, seems to be running a little better line right now. Take a look at the car. I, I haven't seen it kick out too awfully much, so it uh, uh, looks like it may be just a little bit loose getting to the middle there. I believe the Garrett Evans car is just a little bit quicker right now than Hornaday's. I think Hornaday's getting a little bit of a loose condition, but boy, making a pass on him, he don't mind driving that thing a little bit sideways, so he's going to be tough to pass. You know, we saw in the, in the first super truck race here how long it took Rick Corelli to finally get back by Ron Hornaday uh, in the truck. And, and, you know, Hornaday gives you room, but you've got to do it on the bottom of that racetrack, and it's just so tough to do, and it wears your equipment down. Well, here we go again. He didn't give up. He used that slower car for a pick there. You see Hornaday coming back up on the inside to take the lead back. Oh, what a great, great move by Ron Hornaday. He got picked in behind number 70, Chris Trickle there, but then dove right back to the bottom of the racetrack and went back by Evans. I don't think Evans knew he was there. As they say, this isn't over yet. They're side by side going down the back straightaway. Man, this is some great racing. I tell you, every week we see Ron Horn today hooked up in the battle of his life, and every week it's with a different guy. Let's take another look at that move on, on, on that pass when the, Evans got by him. Now watch, watch him right here. Well, Garrett Evans has this move down pat. He goes right back by Hornaday. You see Hornaday turn to the left, come right back up beside him. Then he uses the slower car for a pick going into turn four. Yeah, Evans, Three, rather. Evans lost his momentum there once he got by him and Hornaday had a head of steam up, drove right back by him. This is some great, great racing between two very talented short track drivers. Well, it's just going to come down to who makes the least amount of mistakes when they get right down to it. Right now, you see Garrett Evans is able to move right back on Hornaday, but he cannot make that pass to get by him. Well, in the, in the three weeks that we've been here, buddy, I've only seen uh, Ron Hornaday make a couple of mistakes. There one was of one right there. He turned sideways right in the middle of the corner. When he got back in the throttle, you see Garrett Evans trying to take advantage of Couldn't quite do it. Got a feeling the racetrack might be getting a little slick because we've seen Evans' car, when he goes down to the bottom to make that move to pass Ron Hornaday, he just can't quite get the traction that he got earlier on. Pretty slick out there. Well, right now, he, he does not want to make a mistake like he did last week against Hornaday. He went in so hard behind him that he actually looped the car around and cost his chance of winning the race. So uh, right now, he's being very careful. And as I say that, he pulls right up beside him. And Evans makes the pass and takes the lead, uses the car number four. Dennis Dyer has to pick that time and hangs on to it. Let's go down the route. Glenn, we are high up in the Crew Chief's grandstand. This is on the back stretch here at Tucson. This is Bill Sedgwick, Crew Chief for Ron Hornaday. What is the problem with the car? Uh, we're not sure at the moment right now. It looks like a stagger problem. I think the car loosened up on him a little bit. He's compensating right now in the turns. How's he doing that? Can you tell? Well, I really can't tell you that. You know, I don't know. Ron's just got a, a knack of driving the car. He could compensate with a Neil Held handling car. Well, buddy, you know all about driving ill-handling cars. If you can win or finish well with an ill-handling car, that is the mark of a truly great race car driver. I would say right now what Ron Hornaday has to do is run as smooth as he possibly can and try to get another chance to get beside of Garrett Evans going in the corner and making a move on him. But it's a game right now that they're using these slower cars for picks getting in the corner. You can hang him up like that, you can get a tremendous drive by him, and that's what Garrett Evans has done right now. Ron Horner today is going to have to drive his heart out to catch him back. Look at Garrett Evans working the traffic right now, and in that traffic, he is starting to pull away from Horner today. He's pulled away to about a five or six car link lead. We'll be back to bring you more exciting action between these two guys and the rest of the field. Take a look at the top five there. Don't go away. We'll be right back to settle this thing. And we're back at Tucson Raceway Park. Garrett Evans, car number 64, continues to lead Ron Hornaday, the blue and white car who has been right on his bumper or else Evans has been right on his throughout most of the day. I want to correct one thing when Ralph did the interview with, uh, uh, with Hornaday's crew, we put up on the screen that that was Bill Sedgwick. That was not. That was Sammy Casales, one of the crew members. So we want to apologize for that. But... Uh, we're sorry, Mrs. Sedgwick. We know that that wasn't your husband. Uh, we have corrected it now. At least we hope so. You know, Glenn, while we were up, we got to spin down the front straightaway and the yellow flag's out here. Number 27, Brian Brown. He's back underway, but the yellow is out. We didn't waste any time getting her uh, 
straightened out and headed back in the right direction, but uh, he did spin right off the floor and was pretty close to the, uh, the groove. You know, they run so low here that uh, he came to a stop right off the groove on the bottom of the racetrack. NASCAR did go ahead and throw a caution flag. This will bunch the field back up again. And while this green flag racing has been going on, remember we took the green at lap 102. We're now on lap 155. And Garrett Evans has lapped the fifth place car. That's that's uh, that's pretty heady stuff. Yeah, but look right behind him. There's a guy coming up just to see if he looks okay. <laughs> that's Ron pulled, Hornaday. He pulls up beside him and says, hey, uh, just in case you forgot, Garrett, I'm still right here. We only have three cars on the lead lap. Those would be Garrett Evans, Ron Hornaday, and number 55, the youngster, Kevin Harvick. So those are the only three cars on the lead lap. have had some uh, some developments uh, in the world of racing buddy in NASCAR this week first of all uh, the day before the banquet uh, last Thursday Todd Bodine pulled the winning or the wild card out he will get to run in the Bush Clash Glenn what a great effort he's had all year long he's been caught up in a lot of accidents it was none of his uh, doing a lot of time so glad to see him in there he might take it all he might the Bush Grand National uh, pole champion and series champion David Green will run the Bush Clash also in a car owned by Kenny Schrader. Uh, it will have a Rick Hendrick Motorsports engine, and it will be crewed by his crew. Now, also, Dale Earnhardt is retiring, and Jeff Green, who we couldn't figure out what was going to do, Jeff Green has been named as a replacement for Dale Earnhardt. We better see in the Bush Grand National. We can't, we can't keep the people thinking Earnhardt's retired. Ah, oh, buddy, I wanted to have a little fun with it. We were going to come back and say, you know, well, folks, that was only in his Bush Grand National car. Earnhardt has decided to devote full-time to Winston Cup racing, and the saga of Jeff Green is over. He will be in Earnhardt's car. The fourth item of interest is there is a race on to build a racetrack in Dallas between uh, drag car uh, expert, in fact, former funny car champion Billy Meyer and Bruton Smith. I just have to bet on Bruton. He's already done this before. Yeah, he, he's been there before, but uh, we're getting ready to go back to Green. Garrett Evans takes him down to take the green flag. Bruton Smith made his announcement. Meyer made his announcement. We'll wait and see who actually gets the first racetrack built and the Winston Cup date should that happen. They got clear racetrack for a second or two. We'll really see the dominant car right now because there's no slow cars to really affect how these guys get through the corner. See Hornaday trying to go by on the outside. Uh, Garrett Evans makes the move right to the top to cut him off. Yeah, I've, I've watched Hornaday on his restarts. He'll, he likes to run high a little bit and he'll run low. I guess he just searches out the groove that best fits him once the uh, tires have cooled down a little bit. Glenn, if you can get the driver looking in the mirror, he can make more mistakes that way. I used to try to move around enough to keep him looking anyhow. Yeah, buddy, when I was racing against you, I was always looking in the mirror to see which way you were going. Of course, you were coming up to lap me, so I was just trying to get out of your way. Looks to me like Garrett Evans has a really good handling race car right now, but they they will be up on lap traffic pretty soon. This thing's far from being over here. Well, it is, but I, you're right. Evans' car is working just a little bit better right now. He's taking pretty good care of his tires. You know, Hornaday is a little bit more aggressive driver, and as we have seen in the past few weeks. And uh, right now, Evans' car seems to be hooked up just a little bit better. He's pulling away maybe uh, a tenth of a second a lap, maybe not quite that much, but it's uh, uh, it's still close. And again, Hornaday maybe may be just laying back and, uh, and waiting to make a run at him. I don't want to alarm anybody, but I've seen a little bit of smoke off the right front tire of Garrett Evans' car just then. I don't know whether he broke the front end loose or what, but right in the middle of turn one, there was a puff of smoke. Well, it doesn't seem to have slowed him down any right now. The distance between he and Hornaday has remained about the same. There you see Evans as he continues to lead. Uh, once again, 1994 was the Northwest Series champ. Second place is Ron Hornaday. He's had, uh, as you can see, 16 career NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour wins and is a former champion of that division. Barely lost the Winston West uh, Championship last uh, week here to Mike Chase. Hornaday's car seems to, like I said, the, the distance has stabilized pretty much between the two. There's your uh, third place driver. That's Kevin Harvick, car number 55. His best finish up to now has been a 14th. Uh, back in October in Bakersfield, California, I think he's on his way to his career best day right now, buddy. Yeah, you look at that race car now. People back home, remember what this car looks like. That's how you take care of a race car and have something at the end. Now, they have a caution. He can come right back up on the lead cars. He's not out of this race yet. 
And running fourth is Kenny Shepard, who was the pole sitter, got his first pole here today at Tucson. Last time he ran here, in fact, the only time, he had an 18th place finish. Now he is in fourth position. Had a little trouble earlier on, got involved in a spin, had to come back up through the field, but uh, no damage to the car. And there is the fifth place car, our old buddy Rick Crawford, the Alabama boy. He is, uh, the last two times we've seen him race at Phoenix in the Southwest Tour race, he's finished third there, both in 1993 and 1994. There's a shot from inside Rick's car. You can see exactly what he's seeing. He goes down the back stretch. He's got uh, Harvick in his sights, but uh, uh, Rick is a lap down, I believe. That's hard to believe that he's a lap down as well as that car is getting around the racetrack, but you can see they're closing in on him. He's, he's not really, if you try to say, what's wrong with this car? Why isn't he leading? Of course, this car is leading right now. That's Garrett <laughs> Evans. But uh, when you look at Rick Crawford's car, you say, why isn't he leading? But you're off a couple of tenths a lap. It don't take very long to get a lap down. No, it doesn't. Garrett Evans continues now to build on that distance between he and Ron Hornaday. He's pulled away now to about a 10 to 12 car length lead. You can see Hornaday come into the third turn there. There's Evans coming off of four, and Hornaday starts his trip off of four down the front stretch. And we say, I start to say the front straightaway, but uh, there is no straightaway here at Tucson Raceway Park. Boy, Garrett Evans got really loose then. Hornaday picked up about five car lengths in that one corner there. Good battle for position here again between Dennis Dyer and Rick Crawford. And we've got a report now that there is a little bit of rain falling. We saw it coming from the west, just a little bit of moisture. It's getting a little bit slick. There's only 25 laps to go. We're going to try to get this thing uh, ran all the way under green. But they're battling for fifth position. Dyer has run in the top four, five, six all day long. You see a little bit of scuff mark there on the right rear quarter panel of his car. He's on the inside of Crawford, and uh, I really think he's going to be able to make the pass because Crawford's car seems to be just a little loose. Whoa, a little touch there. He, he made that spot. He, he got into Rick Crawford just a little bit. You see the tire marks down the door there, but they're right back at it again, side by side. Yeah, it didn't take long, and, you know, Dyer held his line, uh, Crawford held his line, and uh, no pass to make big tire mark on uh, Dennis Dyer's car there. Well, you see these guys going off the corner here. They're inches apart, but you don't see them look over at each other. One thing you don't do is pay any attention. You act like he's invisible when he's up under you like that. And you saw an angle there that Crawford didn't want to see, and that was uh, Dyer driving by him on the inside. And I believe he'll pull off and leave him. In fact, he's already bolted to about a, a three or four car length lead. And car number 70, Chris Trickle, has moved down on the, on the uh, bottom of the racetrack. Hornaday just made the move for the lead. He got by Garrett Evans there in traffic. Well, while, we, while we were watching those cars, Hornaday just zipped right around him. Take another look at it. You see him pulling up. Oh, the traffic's what did it. Evans ran up on traffic and went up to the high side of the racetrack. Watch this move between the cars that Hornaday makes. I tell you what, Hornaday, if you open that door, he's going to go through it. Now, going into that corner, Garrett Evans still had that four or five car length lead, and that's how quick Ron Hornaday's reaction. There's 07. That's uh, Lance Hooper. He just spun but continued going. No caution. But you saw how quickly Hornaday reacted and made that uh, little bit of uh, front end damage on, uh, on Hooper's car there. But, Horn uh, but Hornaday took Well, we have a no spin time. down the front straightaway here. I'm not sure whether the caution will come out. That's uh, Mark Meach that spun on the front straightaway, but he's out of harm's way. I don't look for the yellow to come out. Uh, the only danger would be if another car would happen to spin, maybe slide down into him, but he's certainly out of harm's way as far as the racing traffic goes. That was an impressive move by Hornaday. I just can't get over it. Now Evans is going to have to try to pass him again, and there are only 17 laps to go. That's not much time. The yellow flag is out. As you said, Glenn, he's sitting off the racetrack some uh, six, seven car lengths, but if another car was to come off turn four and lose control, it, that would be a hard impact there. Well, it certainly would, and, and when he spun the car, it died and, and uh, installed on him. Ron Hornaday leads. Followed by Garrett Evans after that great pass. We'll be back to see if Evans can retake the lead. We'll finish it out in today's wrap-up with the Featherlight Tour 200. Ron Hornaday leads the cars down the back stretch. They will get the green flag this time. Let's get a quick word from Ralph. We hear Hornaday has a problem. Yes, and that problem is with brakes as Garrett Evans tries to sneak to the inside of them going down into turn number one. As he goes into the corner under braking, the car chatters on Hornaday, and he really has a hard time keeping it under control. 
did a pretty good job that time. Uh, I think that Garrett Evans may have backed off because he might have thought he jumped the flag. Glenn, normally when you have a chatter and a break, the rear brakes are working too well, and that makes the back end jump up and down and makes it very unstable getting in the corner. Well, we'll see if uh, Garrett Evans is able to take care of that. You saw that move that Evans put on to Hornaday there, and I thought that he might get a flag from NASCAR about that move, but he backed off, and uh, Hornaday was able to maintain the lead, so uh, no harm, no foul. Only 10 laps to go now. The distance, and you see Garrett really move up in the corners. That's where his car seems to be the strongest, is right in the middle of the corners. Hornaday seems to get in a little better. Well, what Hornaday is doing right now is trying to use the brakes as easy as he can, getting in the corner and then picking up the throttle nice and easy so he can get off the corner with Garrett Evans. Garrett Evans making a move, see how the back end jumped out just momentarily, and he lost about two car lengths. Looked like he had a good run in there, buddy, and he just turned his side. Well, he does have a good run this time as they start off turn two and go down the back stretch. Evans dives to the inside, and he takes the position. Watch Hornaday try to come back on the inside. Boy, if he... That's what Earnhardt is very famous for. Is that, oh, me, they're going at it like we knew <laughs> they would. <laughs> what a great move. Evans tried to turn it way below the racetrack that time. It's kind of, well, if you can do it, I can do it too, but he couldn't quite do it. What great racing these two guys have put on here today. Let me tell you, folks, it's hard to see a super speedway race when you see action like that. I'm going to tell you this, three-eighths mile, good a race as you'll ever see. Absolutely. Hornaday got in a little wide that time, but Evans was not able to take advantage of it. Hey, it ain't over yet. Here comes Evans again on the inside. Six laps to go, and there's still a lot of time there. Gar Garrett Evans moves down to the bottom again. He just can't seem to hold the power, can't, can't get enough power back in the car coming off the corners to keep that lead that he gets going into the corner. You know, Glenn, Hornaday got up beside of him with just a couple of laps to go last week, and, and he gave him a break just then. He let him go. There's only four laps to go now. Watch how close they get to the wall. There's no way that Evans can get by him on the outside running that close. He backs off a little to make another run. They'll get the three left to go sign this time for the flag when they come by. It's going to be awfully tough, buddy. I don't know if Evans has got enough time now. Well, you see Hornaday starting to dime in the corner. He's going in, letting the back end go up in the middle part of the corner. It's going to be tough for Garrett Evans to make that pass, but don't count him out, folks. He's a, he's a driver. Well, I wonder, you know, he got uh, bumped a little bit, rubbed a little bit by Hornaday last week and exchanged the lead late in the race. I wonder if he might uh, think about payback time. I don't think so. He's fighting for everything he can get right now. The car is a little bit loose coming up off the corner for Garrett. Evans. His only chance right now, white flag coming out. Well, this is the bell left. This is the one we've been waiting on. They're running into just a little bit of traffic as they as they move around number 19, Tony Toast there. He is not a factor. Evans is going to have to take him coming off of four. They're in the middle of three and four right now. I don't believe he's going to be able to make it. Power move, man. He tried to pass him on the outside. Ron Hornaday wins. Held him off again. Another victory for Ron Hornaday. What a great, great race that was. My hat's off to Garrett Evans. It would have been real easy just to drive into Hornaday and turn him around there on the last lap. Good, clean racing. I like it. Oh, I love it, too. And I'm going to take my hat off to Ron Hornaday. Last week came back from three laps down to win. This week, in a major crash along the front stretch here, still held the car on him. It looked like that the left front fender was going to fall off the thing. And I know he had a little bit of handling problems with it, a brake problem later on in the race. Still managed to win the race. Ron Hornaday, another great job. We'll be back to talk to Ron Hornaday. When we come back, Ralph will make his way over into an interview the, uh, the victor. We've seen a lot of Ron Hornaday. We're going to see him again. Stay tuned. We'll be back. We're back at Tucson Raceway Park where Ron Hornaday has just won again. No, it's not a rerun. It's Ron Hornaday again, this time in the Southwest Tour car. He's won in just about everything you can imagine. Third in the truck, first in the Winston West, and now first in the Southwest Tour race. You see Hornaday's car sitting down in victory lane right now. But let's take a look at what he did when he came off of turn four to pull the car down into victory lane. Check him out, buddy. You think he's happy? Oh, well, man, I tell you what. <laughs> you tell me when is not everything. <laughs> <laughs> it was for Ron Hornaday today. There's Ron. Let's go down the route. Well, we're down here with Ron Hornaday. He's got his wife down here in Victory Circle with him and a big trophy for us. Tell me how you held off Garrett Evans. I couldn't tell you how I held him off. I didn't know where he was at. I just knew when I drove underneath him last week, I knew he was going to do the same to me. So the last five laps, I just blocked the bottom and hooked like heck this thing turned. And I just want to thank everybody that came aboard this weekend. Uh, I mean, the Goodyear tires and, you know, Spears Manufacturing gave me this car, come out here with my own crew and do what we did. It's actually great. Were you surprised you didn't muscle by you then? Oh, I was waiting for it. It's one of them deals, you know, we already got a beaten, battered car. And, like, I took a lot of real estate last week on him, and I was waiting for him to take a lot of real estate. 
the weather came and started to sprinkle a little bit, so there was no bottom grooves. So it was kind of when you went in, it slid up. Um, I don't know. I just kind of thank everybody. You know, we got brakes that stayed under this thing all day long. Uh, you know, just everything was great, and uh, I couldn't ask for anything better. Well, your crew chief, Sammy Gonzalez, told us that you had tire problems, you had brake problems, you had all kinds of things going wrong. How was it driving the car itself? Well, the biggest deal is, is that earlier in the day, I got sideways qualifying. I locked the brakes up, and I broke a caliper off. I was getting to the rotor real bad. We jury rigged one up on the rear of this thing, and it started hitting about lap 50. So I had to go in the corner about half the race without using the brakes and once I got it in there where I can drive in straight and use all the front brakes this thing was just awesome. You used up all of the racetrack through the corners especially coming down the back straightaway it looked like there wasn't more than maybe a half an inch of times between you and the wall was that the preferred line or was that a course due to the fact of the way the car was handled? Well we tightened it up we didn't think the weather was going to get this cool we tightened it up a little bit I had a little push in the middle and I was sliding coming off uh, I probably hit the wall about six seven times a day and I thought I broke a, a blew a right rear tire because it really got loose about five laps in a row calmed myself down I learned from Bill Sedwick, you know, on the on the big car running up here, and it's really been paying off. Uh, just pace yourself and try to do the best you can. I, I really didn't think I had anything for Gary because the first hundred I just really pushed the car hard, and the, the second hundred I got to ride a little bit and see what his line was and took advantage. Well, gentlemen, we talked about making a tough car work is the sign of a true champion. Ron Hornaday proved he is a champion here today. He certainly did. He's proven that several weeks in a row now. We're going to go to break. You look at the top five, Hornaday, Evans, Harvick, Shepard, and Chris Trickle. Hang on. We'll be right back with more from Tucson Raceway Park. Today's exclusive coverage of the NASCAR Winter Heat Series on TNN has been brought to you by Pep Boys Automotive Supercenter and by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Well, to the victors go the spoils. The awards and presentations continue down in victory lane. Let's go back to Ralph Shaheen. Well, at this time, we get to present Sammy Gonzalez a check for $500 on behalf of all the Pep Boy stores across the nation for the Pep Boys Quality Pit Crew Award on behalf of your truly great dedication to good service here today. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my whole crew here. I'd like to thank Goodyear. Man, they put out a hell of a tire. It just kept uh, stayed under the car all day long. Sammy Gonzalez, our Pep Boys Quality Pit Crew Award for round three. And I like that. He told it exactly like he sees it. Here's a look at the top ten we've just been given from uh, from scoring. Of course, winning Ron Hornaday Jr., second Garrett Evans, third Kevin Harvick, fourth pole sitter Kenny Shepard, fifth good run for Chris Trickle, finishing the top five. In sixth place was car number four, Dennis Dyer. Seventh, Ernie Cope. Good run for him. Eighth, Rick Crawford had a few problems at the end. Fell back, lost a few spots. Ninth was Ron Eaton, who started on the outside pole. And bringing up uh, tenth place, finish out the top ten, car number 46, Danny Crafton. Now let's go back down to Ralph. He's got the second place finisher, Garrett Evans. Boy, it really looked like you were going to get him, but you just didn't have enough. How come? What was wrong? running open just got caught in traffic there and got a little bit of bad luck behind the tent car tell me about the battle itself were you surprised at how clean it was this week oh we're having fun me and ronnie good friends go back a long ways and he's a good racer and this uh, i assume will just continue to rage on with this war how will you get him next time did you learn anything off of him that's about have a fall on him so i'm gonna try to be in front next time now, you guys are really becoming the stars of this Winter Heat Series. I mean, everybody across the country is talking about the battle between Garrett Evans and Ron Hornaday. How are we going to settle this thing? Well, so far, he's, he's two for two, so I'm going to have to win a couple to even up a little bit, and then we'll go for best three out of four. Sounds like they got a couple of weeks left to go, gentlemen. Well, as usual, Garrett Evans being a good sport about it all, got a smiling face there, but uh, I tell you, he's put on a heck of a show the last couple of weeks, as has uh, Ron Hornaday. I'll tell you, these guys have really done a good job, buddy. Yes, yes. Super Trucks next week, folks. Be here. P.J. Jones, Rick Corelli, Ron Hornaday, Gary Collins, Walker Evans, Mike Skinner, Kenny Schrader. Man. Well, I can't wait to see Schrader uh, rub fenders with uh, Corelli, Hornaday, Collins, all those guys. And I got to wonder, too, if, uh, you know, we talked to Gary Evans about this a little bit last night. He says they may be thinking about building a truck. I don't think it'll be ready for next week, but uh, I think we'll see him in a truck before this thing's over. Whatever he does, he's going to be pretty good, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, another another exciting uh, day here at Tucson Raceway Park. Be sure to stay tuned for Shade Tree Mechanic following our broadcast here right after uh, we wrap things up here at Tucson. That's tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on TNN.
And we don't take winners off. They're exactly right. Glenn, I tell you what, son. You can't right wear any rookie stripes anymore. You did a great job. Fun to work with. I appreciate your work today. Well, buddy, I appreciate all the help. I think I got to pass the flag a few times and a, a few warnings from, uh, from a few folks, but uh, everything went pretty well. I had a lot of fun. It was uh, nice to be up top again in the booth and to see how things look from here. This is a great racetrack to watch up here. I just want to say to everybody, if you hadn't seen the Super Trucks run, tune in next week. I guarantee you it's good racing. <laughs> As usual, the Winter Heat Series will be a barn burner here. I'm going to say goodbye for uh, Ralph Shaheen down in the pits, for Buddy Baker. This is Glenn Jarrett. Thanks for being with us. Tune in again next week. We'll be right back same time here on TNN.